Welcome to Crunch Time. Today I'm going to be talking about how the Celtics were able to de defeat the Portland Trailblazers yesterday and what this game really means for both teams. So, the Boston Celtics beat the Portland Trailblazers 128-124 yesterday and it looked like a blowout in the beginning. I believe the Celtics had a 20 plus point lead in the first half and it did not look like a close game. It looked like the Celtics were just going to blow them out, and that was going to be that. And it looked like Jason Tatum, he was going to have his bounce back game. And it looked like the Blazers game against the Grizzlies, where they were able to defeat them, uh, m mainly off of their fourth quarter comeback. That was just a fluky game. But then, Portland had a really nice run in the third and fourth quarter. Specifically, players like C.J. McCollum, Damian Lillard, they had great third and fourth quarters, and they almost led them to the win there. I believe C.J. McCollum had, like, three threes in the fourth quarter, which is really good. But Jalen Brown did step up at the end. And what this really shows is Boston can have many different faces throughout a game. Like we saw in the beginning, they can be a dominant team that has so many people that can just make shots on you. You don't know who to focus on. They have Gordon Hayward. They have Jalen Brown. They have Jason Tatum. They have Kemba Walker. Those are four all-star caliber players at their peaks. And then they also have players like Marcus Smart, who's a great player off the bench. And then Daniel Tice is not too bad either. In any game, someone can drop 30 on you. You don't know who to, who you can guard. As we saw in the fourth quarter, Jalen Brown, he really played the best game today, or yesterday for both of these two teams. He, he was the reason the Celtics won. He hit two clutch threes in the fourth quarter, and he looked like the go-to guy at the end of his game. Jason Tatum did have a bounce back game as he went 11 for 22, 5 for 8 from the three point line for a total of 34 points, which is much better than his abysmal game he had against the Bucks. That was just terrible. Um, Jalen Brown, he was 10 for 18, 30 points, 6 for 8 at the three point line. That's really good. One thing I did notice, however, is that Kemba Walker has taken a smaller role in the bubble. But I feel like this is due to his injury. As he said, he had, I believe, a shoulder injury, something like that. But when he does get back to full health, will this cause some issues? Because if Jalen Brown's playing like this, you can't take the ball out of his hands. And if Jason Tatum can play like he was post-All-Star break, or like he did against the Portland Trailblazers, you don't want to take the ball out of his hands. So what does this mean for a player like Kemba Walker? Gordon Hayward has had to take a smaller role al already, Ever since he left Utah, and that injury he had against Cleveland first game of the year a few years ago, he's not really been the same since then, and I don't think he will be the same. So that's really what my thoughts are for a Boston Celtics. Now I really want to talk about, Por talk about the Portland Trailblazers, and I feel like this is a much more meaningful game for them than it was for Boston, considering Boston had already clinched... Um, I feel Bo I think Boston has already clinched the playoffs, and we're also in a much weaker conference. Well, that's debatable. You can see you can debate if we're in a weaker conference or not. But the bottom of the East, like five through eight, is definitely weaker than five through eight in the West. We can all agree on that. So the Portland Trailblazers are right now sitting at the ten seed at the recording of this video, and this video has been is. Record, getting recorded before the Grizzlies Pelicans game and before the Spurs 76ers game. Those games both have major implications for the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers are right now the 10th seed, and to make the play in tournament, we'd have to be the 9th seed. Right now, the 9th seed is currently the San Antonio Spurs, who are, point five, who are two games behind the Grizzlies, while the Trailblazers are two and a half games behind. The Spurs with a win would really be able to cut that deficit, but if they lose, they'd go back to with the Blazers. They'd be tied with the Blazers. The Pelicans, however, are playing with Grizzlies, and if they get a win, that helps everyone 
but the Grizzlies. That helps the Spurs, Trailblazers, Pelicans, and even the Kings and the Suns if you think they have a chance. The Spurs really have been playing good, but so have the Portland Trailblazers. CJ and Dame, they both had really good games, and Yusuf Nurkic has been really good since his injury, which is really nice to see. He had an awful leg injury, and to see him drop like 30 and have like a double-double, and he's also really good on defense, he had, he's been doing really good for them. Other than that pass at the end of a Celtics game, which made no sense whatsoever, he's been doing really good for them. Despite this, the I don't know if they have what it takes to beat teams like the Spurs, Grizzlies, or even the Pelicans. They have the talent, but are they going to be able to stay on track and defeat them? They are. They probably are the most talented team of those four I just listed, and Damian Lillard really gives you an edge on that. One thing I've seen is that Damian Lillard, he hasn't started off the best in the games, and... You can't let teams start off against you, just give them double-digit leads and have to work back from that. That's not going to work every time, and we saw that against Boston, even though it almost worked against them too. The Spurs have been playing good basketball. Grizzlies, not so much. Uh, Pelicans, not really. Well, Grizzlies have been playing. They just haven't been able to win um, the few games they've played. Um... I feel like what really is going to matter for the Portland Trailblazers is what Melo can do. Melo has stepped up in both of the games they've played as he hit a bunch of clutch shots for them against the Grizzlies, which ultimately sent it to overtime was his clutch shots. He hit two really big threes in those games. And if he misses those, that sets a pretty large gap between Memphis and Portland. He just isn't that great defensively, and Portland isn't that great defensively. They've let up a lot of points, and every game that Portland plays is a, always a high-scoring affair. They let up 128 points against the Celtics and 135 against the Grizzlies. I know that went into overtime, but even in four quarters to allow 124, that's still quite a bit. But Portland does have really nice role players like Gary Trent Jr., who really had a good game against Boston, 21 points. That's pretty good to have. Hassan Whiteside for what he is. Personally, I don't like him as a player. I feel like he doesn't put as much effort on defense. But he still can get blocks, good rebounder. Then you have Zach Collins, who was starting at power forward, I believe, for them. He's an interesting player. He can hit the three ball. I think Portland is going to get the 8th seed. Um, it really depends, though, what the Grizzlies are able to do and if they can bounce back. Because they've had really bad games recently. And hopefully for them, they can start playing better. So those are my thoughts on the Celtics-Portland game that happened yesterday. So comment below. Um, what you think the Trailblazers are going to do for the rest of the bubble. Thanks for watching and have a great day.